Okay, Watson Brown joins us from Cookville with his weekly Titans analysis. Watson, how are you? George, I'm great. You guys good today? We're good. We're good. Good. Let, let's let start. Uh, let me kind of set the scene on this. San Diego. San Diego. Good Lord. The Chargers <laughs> led. I know. I still say it. The Chargers led mm-hmm. 11 to nothing. The Titans had just gotten booed like I have never heard when the offense left on what was either their second or third possession. Uh, they'd had like three quarterback sacks of Tannehill. And they come out down 11 nothing, and Traylon Burks blows by a Charger defender. You're going to see the play here in just a second. Watch this rainbow that falls right where it needed to. Watson, from that moment on, it looked like a totally different offense. Why? Uh, well, the first thing you, everybody will, will say was that Ryan played a lot better. But I say the reason he played a lot better was the play calling. You look at his 24 throws in the game. He threw to a second receiver, I think, once, maybe twice. But it was always his primary target, and a lot more of those throws were either Play action passes, even play action passes, kind of the, the a lot of guys are doing now this semi boot thing and then kind of throw back to the other side or sprint out. And it's what he does best. They gave him his top throws. When he when he puts his eyes on a target and it's open, and a lot of these throws were open and play action passes will create that, or at least what is called in the NFL open, it's one on one. It's a one-on-one throw. He is very accurate. He is just not real good at second and third guys. Even some of the sacks, I still thought early in the game, he was he held them too long. There was a screen where he just all we all quarterbacks understand screen not there, throw it in the ground. You don't scramble with a screen. You can't throw it downfield. That's a penalty. You just take a screen and you're taught that and. In junior high, when you throw screens, and um, but the play calling I thought was as good as I've seen it in five, six years. I thought the uh, keeping the run pass possibilities, doing so much more off of Derrick Henry and not as much off of off of drop back stuff, um, was the difference in the game. And uh, I thought Coach Kelly got better as the game went on, but he gave Ryan things that he can do. And he did them very, very well. And uh, he is one of the toughest nuts I have ever seen. He takes more shots and gets up and never complains and goes again. A lot of those really good completions, he got nailed after he threw the ball. And uh, you don't see that as much because they're following the ball to the receiver. But he is tougher nails. He is very accurate when he's in rhythm. Very accurate. He is very accurate on the move. He's just not as good when you've got to slide slightly or hop a little bit and get to the second and third guys. Uh, but I thought the difference in the game was the play calling on offense. Kelly, your thoughts? I just think that everything runs through Derrick Henry, and when when he's the the motivating factor in all that, then uh, that's when the offense goes. I mean, that's kind of like the games that Mike Vrabel wants. I mean, it, it, they're nail biters. There's a lot of games in the National Football League are nail biters, but that seems like the game that he wants. You know, it's it's kind of it's close. Uh, I agree with Coach. The play calling was different, but I, I just think everything's got to run through Derrick Henry, and and the first game just didn't seem that way, George. It really didn't. I thought. I thought Ryan Tannehill did a he he did such a much better job of the first week. We obviously know that he turned the ball over three times, but he was he was like eighty three point three percent completion in that game. Uh, guys were open. He was hitting hitting those guys. He made a huge play in the overtime in the overtime when he hit DeAndre Hopkins on that big on that big play where they got a first down, I believe. Uh, so that that was a huge play in the game, and he made the plays when he had to. George, that's that's the difference of winning and losing in the National Football League. Watson, uh, I cannot remember, as we watch the second of these bombs, I can't remember a time where the Titans 
have gotten two bombs in a game. Uh, give me some thoughts on that. Is this now the start of more long ball offense? What do you think? No, just keep the, doing doing things off of the play action. And anytime you put the ball in 22's belly, or at least get it close to his belly, it, it freezes everything. You're going to crowd the line of scrimmage because of number 22. And so you're catching one-on-ones. And again, Ryan is very accurate when he's in rhythm and it's and it's a rhythm throw and his guy's open. He's very accurate. He's, he is a much better deep ball thrower than he is a high-low thrower. And uh, Kelly brought up the play to Hopkins. What was that? It was a, a kind of an unbalanced line overshift, sprint out pass where they take the outside guy and run a little quick quick out it's just a high low principle but it was off a sprint out and it was a deep cut at about 18 16 to 18 yards by the inside receiver which was hopkins and ryan's right on the money but that's what he does very very well so don't forget what you did and keep doing that and keep and keep derrick henry as your focus because i don't think they're good enough to do anything else they're not drop back passers. We haven't been in five years. I mean, we're not drop back protectors. Haven't been in five years. That's not what they do best. Run the run the stretch play, a little bit of counter here or there, something like that. But keep giving it the twenty two. Um, he's it's amazing to me. He's not getting downhill as much as he used to. He's getting hit at the line of scrimmage, closer to the line of scrimmage. But he falls for four. That big old long body, I mean, they, he just falls for four, and it's second and five. And that's the way they got to play. I don't care if they're down 14 nothing in the third quarter. I don't leave it till I absolutely have to because I'm not sure anything they can go to will work better than what they got. Kelly, my biggest worry leaving is – in the offensive line, Tannehill is taking some brutal shots. And, and I don't see any quarterback able to take that 17 weeks in a row. Yeah, it's tough. And uh, Coach just talked about it, how tough Ryan Tannehill. I, I was kind of like that, too. I just I was kind of stupid with it. I didn't move. <laughs> I just sat in there, and I took a lot of shots. He's like a pinball sometimes, man. He was getting hit hard. But uh, I'd just like to go back to what, what Coach was talking about, what you were talking about, George. Each week presents a different challenge. So next week they might not be able to go down he, uh, down the field like they did this past game because they might not have – it's all about matchups in the National Football League. And Coach knows that. Same thing in college. But sometimes – you have matchups with some of the some of your wide receivers on those corners and you want to take some shots where you know other times when you're playing like the Dallas Cowboys or the New York Jets where they've got guys outside and inside so it's harder to get the ball downfield each team presents a different problem George and and they were able to uh kind of take advantage of that yesterday with some of their guys getting behind the defense but uh yeah, Ryan Tannehill, he's getting older. Uh, they, they've got to figure out something with the O-line. It's too bad that Peter Skaronsky, I don't know what's going on with him. I know that when I was in uh, Indianapolis, uh, I, to I told this story a couple months ago, but uh, we were in Philadelphia back in the old Vets Stadium, and our right tackle, Steve McKinney, woke up. He had an emergency appendectomy, and he did not play that game. And then that's when, um, that's when another guy came in and played really well. And, um, you know, you just got to be able to step up. But it's too bad that he got hurt or whatever happened to him. But, you know, the guy that came in for him, I don't think did very well. And then they put somebody else in. He did a pretty adequate job. So uh, they've got to fix that line. Uh, they've got to give him a little bit more time. But I, I'm going to go back to what I said and what Coach just said. Everything runs through 22. And Tom Moore used to talk all the time to us about Edron James. He would have – 40 yards going in the fourth quarter and by the end of the game he'd have 115 yards so you just got to stick with it and that's what they built this deal around they built it around Derrick Henry one of the best running backs in the National Football League and you've got to go off him he's got to get the touches he's got to stick that ball in there and have play action passes because I think that's what Brian Tannehill does best just like coach said Watson, I was really proud of the defensive effort. First of all, Justin Herbert is a stud. We all know mm -hmm. that. Um, I came away believing that they were out of gas going into overtime and was shocked when they were able to force 
a three and out. Watson, talk to me about what you saw from their defense yesterday. Uh, better. Uh, they, they, it's the team now. You know what the team is now. Yeah, your your weakness on offense, the receiver thing has been fixed. We're much better there. The weakness, the thing we got to watch that I think still a C right now is the offensive line. The, the, the C on the defense is the secondary. And uh, that defensive front has to dominate. They've got to get to the quarterback. And I don't mean sack him. I just mean be in his face. Uh, when he get when quarterbacks get to set on us, we're in trouble. But uh, that's pretty much the NFL, anyway. I don't. I, I think we're a much better team, and we got a shot, George. They, it, I, I'll, I'm going to get on the coaching of the Chargers a little bit. And those last three plays, when they when they went to, well, when they didn't score before the end of the game, I thought the play calling got a little rough. And then there, the the, the passes they called. The three passes they called um, in, in overtime. overtime, it was just, it was awful. And the third one, nobody knew what to do. You shot, you got a wide angle of the third down play and two of them went out and looked around. They didn't know, they didn't know what the play was. I mean, it just, just so disorganized. And, uh, but the Titans, to me, what they got to do, if the Titans, if the Titan offense has got to understand they're always within the chains if they don't get penalties because Derek's going to gain three or four. They're always within the chain. When they get in trouble is when they get behind the chains. A lot, of, a lot of teams that way. I think the Titans are worse. Ryan is not a great drop-back thrower, and they're not drop, very good drop-back protectors. They have got to stop holding and illegal procedures, understand how important it is for them not to do that, and just stay within those chains, and Ryan can make those throws. Third and five, second, second and eight, uh, second and four. Keep it within the chains, and they're going to have a shot. With that defensive front the way it is, and a secondary that I think can get better, they're better than last year already, they're going to have a shot. But stay within those chains. This is the uh, touchdown that ultimately gives the Titans the lead, I want to say at 27-24. I hope I'm right about that. Um, no, this is uh, it the option play that he ran, the the uh, zone option play he ran and scored that Ten Hill ran? Was that uh, it? No, the so pass. What you're looking at? The pass yep. to uh, the last touchdown they scored. It was the pass to uh, Westbrook. Oh, Akina, the, it, the end zone. I, I, it, that very well could have been an RPO. I think it was play action pass. Hey, and they just hit a little quick skinny post in there. Watson, you brought it up. The uh, the run on the option. Uh, the Use Chargers. Him more. Use his legs. Yeah. His legs. <laughs> he can still run. The, kid, the guy can still run at 35, 36 years old. Use him. Go ahead, Kelly. Well, he he went to he went to college as a wide receiver, so the guy can run. That was that was kind of amazing to me, though. They they had both those guys in the backfield. And uh that that was a really good that was a really good play design. He had Derrick Henry, and Derrick Henry had his he had his option uh, he had his option length with the uh, pitch. He was waiting on the pitch, and that was a good play by uh, by Ryan Tannehill. But he still he can run. He's still an athletic guy. Uh, and, and you saw what happened on that touchdown pass, George. What did it start with? It started with him sticking the ball in Derrick Henry's stomach. So when when you do that, I mean, you're going to get those linebackers to bite up and then sneak somebody up because they're so worried about Derrick Henry. They know, hey. If we don't stop him, we're in trouble. So everything still goes through number 22. Watson, help me with this. The Titans go to Cleveland next week, and Cleveland has Pittsburgh tonight on national TV. Because yep. it's so early in the season, will a head coach basically say to each of his assistants, okay, here's what I want you watching tonight. Because you've only got one game of 2023 film on the Browns, how will that work tonight? Oh, they'll look. They'll they'll, they'll watch it maybe, uh, but they get it so quick after the game yeah. that they're going to. That they, they really it, you can't. The way a coach looks at it, you can't watch television and do it, George. There, there's so okay. many breakdowns of things they look at and. 
And uh, so I, I don't think that'll be big, even though I say they will be watching it. Kelly, will the players be watching? Oh, yeah, the players are going to watch it. But just like Coach said, there's not enough angles. That's why they have those. Everything's instant now with all this stuff, and they can get it. But you don't get the angles that you get when you're when you're getting filmed. They're going to cut the film up. They're going to see third downs and all that. They're probably, you know, they've already watched the other game that they had the week before. But I, I will say this. Don't sleep on the Browns. My, my old oh. team's pretty good. They, they've got some good young talent. Deshaun Watson's, uh, he looks like, but, you know, kind of been there. Achilles Hill has been the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they were able to get Pittsburgh uh, a couple of times a couple of years ago. But uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers have always been their bugaboo, so it'll be interesting to see how they play tonight. But the the Browns are, you know, I'm I'm looking for good things for the Browns this year. I really am because they got a really good young cast of characters. Last thing for well, both. Uh, go ahead, Watson. A little, one thing I say about the Browns, <laughs> they can rush the passer. Yeah. They can yeah. rush the passer. They do not. They be, well, we just talked about they better do in that game, or it could get embarrassing, or we could hurt a quarterback. Watson, l- let me ask both of you this. When, when your pro football team loses, the fan reaction is the sky is falling. When your team wins, we're headed to the Super Bowl. <laughs> what? What's the, for you? What's the real take now? Two games in for both of you of what is fair to expect out of this team. I think this team is better than last year. The secondary is better. The rec- the receiving the receiving core is much better. The offensive line is about what it was last year. I I think if they can stay healthy, they'll be around. And I still don't think the division is. It's uh, it, the Colts play are playing good, but I don't think that they'll beat us. The Texans are still poor, and the Jags still had trouble last night offensively. So, I think it's it's going to be a two team race to to see who wins the division. I think the Titans will be one of the two. Kelly, I do too. I'm I'm totally in agreement with that. But we all know stuff starts up front, and uh, they got to fix that O line. Uh, they really do. I I'm excited to see what they've done because they can get pressure on the passer now with those guys up front. Their front four is pretty good, and it seems like that's a that's going on throughout the league. You got the San Francisco 49ers who've been good. Then you got the Jets. You got uh, you know you got the Cleveland Browns coming on. You got uh, the Dallas Cowboys. What they're doing on defense. I'm glad. I'm sitting at home watching these games on TV, and I don't have to deal with that because those defenses are really good. And I think the Titans, they've upgraded on defense. They really have. They've, you know, a good good defensive line that can get pressure on a passer. You don't have to be great in the secondary if they can rush the passer and make him move a little bit. You don't have to be overly great in the secondary. But offensive line-wise is a thing that's the key for me. Uh, they just – they've got to get better with that, George. But uh, – you look at what Coach just said about the division. I don't see there. there's not any big game changers there. I mean, Indianapolis looks like they're better, but uh, C.J. Stroud and the Texans are not very good. I mean, Trevor Lawrence, you know, they had a great year last year, but can they do Which, it again for the second Richard year? So I don't know. Hurt. Yeah. So let, let me ask this, because you, you used a couple of words, Kelly, that had all the bells in my head going off. Need to fix the offensive line. Okay, we all know that. Yeah, but truly, given what is on campus, is it fixable? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you can do things with play calling, like coach is talking about. You can get the ball, like if you are going to throw a drop back pass, get the ball out of Ryan Tannehill's hands. But uh, they're better run blockers than they are pass blockers. You can you can tell that. But they, they at some point they're going to have to do that. So yeah, I think it's fixable, George. You just got to keep working. But you got to have continuity on the O line. And with Skaronski going out. You know, that kind of puts that on hold a little bit because now you got fill ins there. So uh that that's the thing that everybody's looking for is continuity on the offensive and defensive lines. And defensive lines change out. But like you want five guys that are re- very durable that are gonna be there week in and week out. That's hard to do, but they, they've got to find that continuity and, and with that you can't have injuries. Watson, they get petite free air, if I've said that right, back in about a month. Do yeah. you think this is fixable? Yeah, because just I've always said you can't beat your opponent till you don't beat yourself. 
And right now, these they, it just stop the penalties alone and get a hat on somebody, and that that big guy in the back falls for five, and just understand, stay within those chains. I keep bringing that up because that's their only chance, George. When they were really good, and and we were the number one seed going into the playoffs, what did we do that year? That's what we did, and that is that is Mike Vrabel's style. I don't think it'll ever change. Uh, I think if if when Derrick Henry's gone, he'll still be wanting to play this style of football and accept what he wants to do and get, get better at it. And, uh, yes, I think they can play better. They're never going to be the best line in, in the AFC. Nope, not going to happen this year, but they can play better than they're playing. And just some slight improvements – to where you don't hurt Derrick Henry and you don't hurt Ryan Tannehill. Those two guys have got to be playing at the end of the year uh, for, for the Titans to win the division. Watson, thank you. Good talking to you as always. We'll do it again here soon. Okay. Talk. See you guys. Okay. Watson Brown with his Titans analysis and a little bit of help from Kelly Holcomb as well.